بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفر إنه كان توابا So now inshallah moving on to the next surah Surah Al-Nasr after we completed the Surah Al-Kafirun last week Surah Al-Nasr it uh, it ties in very well with uh, the surah before because in the surah before the there is this vision which the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is giving to the people of Mecca that the people of Islam will be firm on their faith and the people of Islam will not change any tenets of their faith for any of the proposals of the people of Mecca and that by this strength Allah Ta'ala will give them victory and this surah uh, talks a, a bit about this victory as well as the help of Allah Ta'ala and there are some other a few messages which we can take from this take from this surah as well so the first being that Allah Ta'ala in the first ayah says that when the victory when the victory of Allah comes and triumph now uh, the, the translator translates Nasrullah as victory but firstly to understand the word Nasr it means generally it, for, it comes from the word Nawasir which refers to right, we know that every every word in the Arabic language has a lot of depth and there, there are original meanings and there are borrowed meanings so the original meaning of the word Nawasir are water or pathways through which the water would spread in, in valleys or in lands and people would take and use that water and it would help them so the meaning of help comes from this picture, this image right. so the Nasr means to help and generally in the context when Nasr is used in the Arabic language uh, and used in the context of battles or you know uh, opponents the Nasr is used for uh, it, it could be translated as victory this is why the translator uses the victory of Allah but Nasr does carry more of the meaning of I want to differentiate it between Nasr and Fath and this is very important because when two words are used in one place they can't have the same meaning in the Quran if they're used in different places if synonyms are used in this is a principle of the Quran if synonyms are used in different places separately then they can have the same meaning but if they're used in the same place for example Nasr and Fath they cannot have the same meaning they have to be alluding to something else so, uh, and we'll, uh, right, we'll explain that just after a bit. But, so Nasr and Fath then are referring to two different things. Now, Imam Razi, rahmatullahi he says a few, he tries to piece this surah together in a few ways. And so some of the few subtle meanings, he says, the few subtle meanings that we take from this surah is that there's, it's a promise. Right? So there is a promise being given to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that promise is that before Allah Ta'ala said to you that He would give you and O Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He would give you until you are pleased and then He said that He gave you the Kawthar and now He wants to give you another great blessing in your life which is that the land of you know the land of your people and the land which you yearn towards right which is Makkah Mukarramah and the house of Allah Ta'ala right? that land which is its it, its cry is in your heart Allah Ta'ala will return that land to you and so remember O Rasulullah Sallallahu that Allah Ta'ala did not waste you in the past and He protected you in the past and so likewise now as well uh, when Allah Ta'ala protects you right? when He wanted to protect His house He sent the Ababil when he wanted to protect you, he sent the angels 
to protect you from the hands of Abu Jahl and other people. And he sent thousands of angels. And now my help itself will come. Because what is said over here, Nasrullah, the help of Allah. So directly, his help being, the help being attached to Allah. So this is divine help. This is different from other help. This is the help from Allah Ta'ala. And so this, the cycle is that Allah Ta'ala sends help. This leads to victory. And then the victory leads to help. And it, it, can, it continues like this in the, the life of the Messenger of Allah And why am I saying this? Because Nasr and Fath are spoken about in another place as well, in one passage, in Surah Al Fath, in which Allah Ta'ala says, Inna fatahna laka fatha mubina, liyaghfir laka Allahu ma taqaddam min dhambika wa ma taakhara, wa yutimma ni'matuhu alayka, wa yahdiyaka sirat al mustaqima, liyansuraka Allahu nasran aziza. Right? So, Inna fatahna laka fatha mubina, we have given you clear victory. And then after the next ayah, Allah Ta'ala says, Why? لِيَنْصُرَكَ اللَّهُ نَصْرًا عَزِيزًا So that He could aid you with a firm aid. With a firm aid. So again, this explains to us, number one, that uh, the aid and the victory are two separate aspects. Right? So in Surah Al-Fatih, the, the, the triumph, the victory, is to give them aid. And over here, the aid is coming first and the fath act afterwards. And this is something also discussed by the, by the Mufassirun. But now why is, this, uh, why is this being given to the Messenger of Allah Some of the scholars, they go in and they say that, right, and one of the, uh, Imam Razi, great Mufassir, he, he explains the surah a lot in, in light of the, of the hadith because Right, but the relationship, you know, Allah Ta'ala has a lot of care and love for His Messenger Sallallahu So the relationship is, He explains in the light of the Hadu, the Habu, that give, you know, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, give each other gifts, right? give each other gifts to, give, give gifts to each other, and your love will increase. So the gift, there are gift, there's a gift being given to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And in response, the Messenger of Allah is also being asked to put something forward. And that comes towards the end of the surah. But what is the gift being given to the Messenger of Allah That is the, 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 hate, the aid, the help. The difference between the word Fath in this surah and the Fath of Surah Al Fath is that in Surah Al Fath it's Fathah Mubina. So the, the word is indefinite, although the, the, the Adjective mubin, which is mentioned after, it does give it some uh, level of being definitive. But yeah, it, it was a, a clear fath. Right? Allah Ta'ala used the word a clear fath, although at the time it was a fath which wasn't that clear for the Sahaba. If we know about the story of Hudaybiyah, then we would be aware of that. But at the time, and we won't go into the detail of, of the story, but because it does have a connection with, with the, uh, this surah and from the aspect of seerah, uh, the, when Hudaybiyah took place, the great, some of the great of the Sahaba, عنهم, they didn't understand what was happening, that uh, you know, uh, the Messenger of Allah said he saw a dream that they would be making the, the pilgrimage, they would be going to, to make tawaf around the house. And then when they went, then we know that at Hudaybiyah they camped and there was a contract which came because due to certain events a contract was made which is known as the Sulh the contract and treaties were in between the people of Mecca and the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu now when that happened uh, they were told to return and not to make Umrah right? they were told to return and not to make Umrah now upon this the Sahaba radiallahu anhum became very enraged that you know, we came, we brought our animals, we brought our families, we brought our animals, we brought our wealth. We didn't bring weapons with us either. So, you know, we didn't, we're not coming with this intention. And now we're being told to stop. Right? And the Sahaba at this point were ready to battle. They were ready, we're, they said we're ready, you know, to, to battle the, the people of Mecca for what, they're, for what they're imposing upon us. Right? And some of, the, some of the things which were unfair, which would seem unfair, which they imposed upon the Muslims, for example, is that in the future, if any 
a person who belonged to Makkah return from Medina to Makkah, then he would not be returned. They would not be returned. Or he, actually, he would not be returned. This was something very specific. Only males were mentioned in the contract. But if a person were to, from Makkah, fl fl they were to fled to, uh, to Medina, then they would have to be returned to Makkah Mukarramah. Right? And there were many other things that, within the contract as well. One of the things was that they would turn back and they would not perform Umrah. And this was very difficult. So difficult that even Umar Adilanu, what did he say? Right? He said, Ya Rasulullah, Alas the Nabi Allah, O Rasulullah, are you not the Messenger of Allah? Right? This is how difficult the situation you know, became. And usually, you know, if at any time Umar Adilanu, you know, uh, questioned a scenario, questioned a situation in the presence of the Messenger of Allah, Abu Bakr Adilanu would you know, tell him to be patient. Right? He would tell him to to be patient. But at this point, the confusion was so that even Abu Bakr did not say anything. And then we know that the Messenger of Allah went and he uh, asked the opinion of Umm al uh, the mother of the believers, and then upon which he started to you know, shave his own head and started to uh, do the other actions. And the Sahaba radiallahu they, they followed. And upon the return, Umar radiallahu was so concerned about the way he spoke to the Messenger of Allah that several times he came Ya Rasulullah and he tried to speak to the Messenger of Allah and the Messenger of Allah was silent so he returned back and then upon the third time uh, then he, he tried to approach the Messenger of Allah this, the Prophet of Allah was silent and after some time the Prophet of Allah said call Umar call Umar radiallahu and then he recited the first approximately 29 ayahs of Surah Al-Fatih. Right? And then Umar Adlanhu, he asked that, you know, after hearing the whole, the whole surah, he asked, he was stuck on still the first ayah. That he said, Oh Rasulullah, was this the Fatih? Was this the victory that we were given? Right? Even though Allah, what did Allah Ta'ala say? Fatiha Mubina. Right? In the eyes of Allah Ta'ala, this is a very clear victory in the eyes of someone who Allah Ta'ala gives them the knowledge and the understanding they'll understand that this was a very clear victory but how was this a victory right, right. so Allah Ta'ala is also number one shaping our understanding of what success and failure is right. this is this is and this is very important when the Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam give da'wah right the measure of success is not how many followers they have the measure of success is not you know how much commotion the movement makes that's not the measure of success right? the measure of success is firstly right, how accepted that effort is in the eyes of Allah Ta'ala that's the first measure of the success right? so this was uh, the, the fatah right? now over here in this surah Allah Ta'ala says the help of Allah and al-fatah the fatah the triumph the victory the conquest so in specific then what is this referring to right and so we'll get into that as well but before we get into that uh, one of the mufassirun he mentions that th this is also given to uh, you know the messenger of allah وسلم, you know if you try when when trying to you know obviously we try to connect every surah with every surah in connection with surah al-kafirun that the messenger of allah وسلم, was given the difficult task to, to persevere and to tell the, explain to the, the, the people of, of Bakka that we would not be on your way, that we would not change our way to be on your way. And so as a reinforcement then Surah Al-Nasr is being given to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu that Allah Ta'ala is with you. And so do not fear the disbelievers. Allah Ta'ala is with you. Another message which is given is that That, O oh, 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 Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that the, the, the dunya, it, it is, never, is never pure. And that its tests nor its blessings are permanent. Right? So Allah Ta'ala gave you some, some, some gifts in the past, some, some divine gifts. But still you had to deal with the, uh, the, the trials which you had to see. But now take the glad tidings of the help of Allah Ta'ala coming. And so in response to this, what does the Messenger of Allah say? Right? We know that this surah, 
Right? Some of the Mufassirun and Ulama of Sira say it was revealed 70 days before the, uh, uh, before the departure of the Messenger of Allah from this world into the mercy of Allah Ta'ala. Right? So the, 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 after the, the Prophet of Allah received the surah, that he now started to choose his direction to return to Allah Ta'ala. And so that nothing, uh, nothing, nothing stays, even the most uh, you know, greatest and blessed conquests and, and these things, none of these things are stay, they are, they're all temporary. Now, uh, when the, uh, Allah Ta'ala says in this surah that the people, that the, the, the fath will be given, what exactly is this fath relating to? And what makes it different from the nasr, from the help, which is leading to the fath? Right. So, so I said in the beginning, right, that when two synonyms perhaps come together, they would allude to different meanings. So the scholars mentioned that the Nasr is the help to gain that which is desired. And the Fath is when what is desired is being given. So that's the, that's the linguistic difference of what is being understood over here. And so some of the scholars then they say that the, the Nasr is that Allah Ta'ala you know, kept the hearts of the believers, uh, the Messenger of Allah and his companions upright and strong. The other meaning is that the Nasr the help of Allah Ta'ala is the Sahaba right? the, the help that's coming from Allah Ta'ala for, to the Messenger of Allah Ta'ala is the Sahaba radiallahu This raises our, uh, our love and our respect. Right? And there are many places within the Quran in which Allah Ta'ala alludes to the Sahaba radiallahu being the help of the Messenger of Allah Ta'ala being the very you know, special group and, uh, the Messenger of Allah Ta'ala was blessed with. Now the Fath in specific, uh, Ibn Abbas his opinion was that this is referring specifically to the Fath of Makkah, the conquest of Makkah. So when the Messenger of Allah وسلم, was returning, uh, right, after the, this treatise, the Sulh of Hudaybiyah was broken by the people of Makkah. And the Messenger of Allah وسلم, then took the group of, of, of Sahaba, عنه, you know, and they were, they were great in number at this point, right? They were great in number at this point and they were going to uh, Makkah Mukarrama and they stopped at a, a, a place near or the outskirts of Makkah known in the, in the narration as, as Vahran and in the night they, they camped there and when they camped there they lit fires, right? And they lit almost every you know, few Sahaba they were commanded and they were told to, to light a fire when they lit the fire, then the people of Makkah, and first the uncle of the Messenger of Allah, Al Abbas, he saw this. And so he told the people of Makkah that, you know, go outside and see. And the, of course, the, 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 at this time, Abu Sufyan, being one of their main leaders, he, uh, he saw, they saw this. And this worried them. Why? Because they were outnumbered. And they did not have the, uh, the strength to, if the Prophet of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Sahabah, Allah, were coming to fight them, that they could oppose them. They, they knew this. So then, uh, you know, the following day, when the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu made his way to, to Makkah Mukarramah, firstly, he had a meeting with Abu Sufyan radiallahu And in this meeting, there was a lot of discussion. But uh, one of the, the, the most important thing that happened in this meeting was that Abu Sufyan accepted Islam. And then after that, when they made their way to the Kaaba, and the Messenger of Allah comes in narration that the Messenger of Allah beard was uh, touching the, the 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 hump of his camel because he, he put his head down out of humility, and this is very uh, uh, this is very different. Why? Because when the Messenger of Allah was exiled from from Makkah Mukarramah, he left for the Hijrah. He left in a manner which his shoulders and head was high. This comes in narration, but when he returned. He returned in a state of humility. Why so? The scholars mentioned if we try to understand. When he left Makkah Mukarramah, the, you know, leaving in this state is also to show that, you know, the, my prophethood and the deen of Islam is not in loss. 
My prophethood, the prophethood of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the deen of Islam is not in loss. But on return, when the, the Makkah is now given back to the hands of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is showing his humility. That this is the blessing of Allah Ta'ala. And that, you know, we're not the people of strength, rather the strength is given to us by Allah Tabarak Wa Ta'ala. So then when the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to Makkah Mukarramah and the people had a lot of fear in their, uh, in their hearts about what happened. Right? There was obviously, you know, uh, years, right, of, 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 of revenge, right? And some of the, right, one of the Sahaba, Sa'ad ibn Abi Baqal, he even started to kind of, uh, you know, uh, say very out loud. And some of the Sahaba followed. And they started to say that اليوم يوم الملحمة, that this is the day we're going to get revenge, right? This is the day we're going to get revenge. And so then uh, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, no, this is اليوم يوم الملحمة. Today is the day of mercy. Today is the day of mercy. And so when they when they made their way to the house of Allah Taala and they were there, then the first thing the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said is that out of honor to Abu Sufyan, any person who will go to his house and will go to, you know, around his house, those people will be protected. And the, anyone who comes to the house of Allah Ta'ala, they will be protected. And that rather all of you are protected and go, all of you are free. Idhabu antum tulaqa. That today all of you are free. Right? And he used specifically the word tulaqa. Why? Because this refers to the fact that uh, you have. There, there, nothing will be taken from you and you are free till the day you die. Right? Till the day you die that we will not take anything from you for what you have done to us, for what you have done to the Muslims. We will not take from, from the past. And then the people were started to accept Islam. Right? People started to in great number, right? On, upon this occasion, they started to accept Islam. And there are many more details, uh, you know, if you were to go into the seerah of this beautiful occasion of, of what we learned from the uh, Fath Makkah. But what did the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? That I will act as my brother act, acted. I will act to today as my brother acted with his people. Uh, you, referring to Yusuf Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he forgave his brothers for the uh, injustice that they had done to him. And so this is exactly what the Allah wa Taala is speaking about when He says Fath. Now Allah Taala says, "Ida ja When the when the help of Allah and the victory will come. Now ja, of course, it it's 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 referring ja is is for when a person comes, right? Not an idea or or not something, right? And so this is to, to give, you know, a, a, a re, an enforced uh, promise to the Messenger of Allah وسلم, that that help is, this help is coming, right? And this is, this is a very important point. Why? Because when does the help come? When does the help of Allah Taala come? And it comes when a lot of sacrifice is given. Right? So after a lot of sacrifice is given, then that's when the Nasrullah, the help of Allah Taala, comes as it comes in another place, for example that the messengers would work and they would struggle uh, so much so until the point that all of their people would leave them <laughs> right? when all of their people would deny and, and call them uh, you know, outright liars then at that point جاءهم نصرنا then at that point then the help of Allah Ta'ala would come and then in the next ayah, Allah Ta'ala says, وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا That and you see the people entering the religion of Allah. Right? You, see the, you see the people entering the religion of Allah in armies. In armies, afwaja. Right? So referring to you know, strong uh, and, and, and large numbers. Right? Strong and large numbers. And over here, uh, the, 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 this blessing is, is, is given to the Messenger of Allah that he's, he's seeing his people entering into Islam. However, uh, of course, this is not all of the, you know, all of the people at the time, but uh, the, the people of Makkah. Right? So not the people 
from, from other places. Why is this point being mentioned or why, why did the Mufassir mention this? Because An-Nas refers to what? All mankind, all people, right? But over here in specific to the people of Makkah Mukarramah. And entering into the deen of Allah Ta'ala in, in great numbers. And in the, in the last ayah Allah Ta'ala says, فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَابًا Then highly exalt your Lord with all praise. Moreover, seek his forgiveness, for indeed, ever has he been all forgiving, all relenting. Now, when this surah was revealed, and in the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu recited this surah to the people, right, they all heard it and they were all very happy. Except for Abu Bakr al he cried when he heard the surah. And he cried when he heard the surah because he understood that now the, 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 the the help of Allah Ta'ala, the great conquest is, is being given. People are entering into Islam, which was the, the great aim of, 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 of the, the Bi'atha, the, the prophethood of the Messenger of Allah And now the Messenger of Allah is being told to praise Allah in opposition to that and make istighfar. Now this, if for Abu Bakr al right, number one being the closest to the Messenger of Allah as pious as he was, the knowledge that he had, he understood that this is referring to more than just a glad tidings, but this is also referring to uh, something coming to an end. And that was the life of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that uh, this is pointing to that time. Right? And as I said, the, some of the Mufassirun say that this surah was revealed approximately even 70 days before the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam departed uh, from this world. And of course, these, these dates can be approximate, they can be uh, they're given by the scholars of Sira and the scholars of uh, Tafsir. But the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying, بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ That exalt your Lord, praise Him. Yeah. Why tasbih? Right. In the tasbih then, what is one concept that we mentioned? It is the tanzih, which is to raise Allah Ta'ala above uh, every, any blemish, right. any sort of nuqsan, any blemish. Now, why is this uh, very important? Because, number one, this uh, tasbih now which is being given in opposition to the, uh, you know, face to face with the help of Allah Ta'ala which came, it's not to return a favor, rather it is, you know, rightly so upon us as a responsibility that we praise Allah Ta'ala. It's an obligation. But number two, that this help of Allah Ta'ala which came is not because even to say that the Prophet Allah Sallallahu and the people of Sahaba Radhanam deserved it. Why? Because if we say, you know, of course in one sense they deserved it, but it doesn't mean that this was an obligation on Allah Ta'ala to do this for them. It was not meaning Allah Ta'ala is not obliged to do anything for anyone. This is very important, right? And this is the, uh, this is the kind of the depth of our Tawheed. Right, that we never say that Allah is obliged to do anything. He never did anything because He had to do something. Right? And there's also a very important point that we mentioned that we can mention you know, regarding His att attributes. For example, Allah Ta'ala is, is Al-Hakim, the All-Wise. Right? But His actions are not dictated by wisdom. Why? Because then there's another factor guiding Allah. We wouldn't say that, right? Because what, what are we doing then? We're taking Allah Ta'ala and we're placing Him in our understanding of wisdom and logic. Which is that wisdom comes and then a person acts. But no, logic is, and wisdom is rather the creation of Allah Ta'ala. So what, what do we say then? His actions, He does as He wishes. And then His, his, his actions and His wishes are in the spirit of wisdom. They're always wise. That's what we say. We don't say that he's obliged to, to do anything according to wisdom. Right? And this, these are the fine points of our Tawheed. So the tasbih of Allah Ta'ala being made is to, for, these, for these points. And then wastaghfir, to make istighfar and to seek forgiveness. Now it comes uh, in narrations that after this surah was revealed that uh, there was never a moment that the Messenger of Allah was seen except that he was saying, Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, nistaghfiruka wa natuhu ilayk. He would always be constantly reciting this, number one. And number two, istighfar is made when, at, one, at what time, what did the Messenger of Allah said? Upon the 
completion of an action. And it's the etiquette, it's the same reason why we make a sifar after salah, we make a sifar after any good action that we do in our life, right? To, to, to humble ourselves and to, you know, just because we did a good action doesn't mean it was perfect. There were shortcomings in that action as well. That, oh Allah Ta'ala, forgive us for that. So we seek forgiveness of Allah Ta'ala. And then at the end, Allah Ta'ala says, Innahu kana tawwaba. Surely He is uh, ever forgiving, ever, you know, all relenting. Right? And so this is the, uh, you know, summary of, of, of Surah, Al- Surah Al-Nasr. Uh, we ask Allah Ta'ala that He grant us understanding of this, forgive us for any shortcomings in our attempt to understand it, and give us deeper understanding and, and practice of the Surah. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين صدق الله العظيم سبحان الله بحمده سبحان الله بحمده نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت مستقبل الله مرتبين جزاكم الله خير إن شاء الله everyone can uh, proceed to the half of us جزاكم الله